Wash. A WWF Living Planet report from 2012 suggests that at the current rate of consumption, humanity will need two Earths by the year 2030 just to sustain itself. But some suggest that even if we curb consumption, it's already too late. It's a prediction made by my next guest, Guy McPherson, professor emeritus at the University of Arizona and author of Going Dark. His book presents a prophetic warning about the consequences of a changing climate and an unsustainable economy that's a heartbeat away from collapse. Now, being skeptical of this sensational prediction, I first asked him what evidence he has to back up this claim. The International Energy Agency is among the most conservative organizations on the planet. They're predicting a temperature beyond which we've had humans on the planet by 2035. I'm not sure anybody would accuse the International Energy Agency of, of being any sort of conspiracy theorists or uh, trying to promote an agenda that is beyond the pale. In fact, I think probably they are as conservative in that assessment as they've been with many others. So you're saying that, that the Earth cannot simply accommodate for billions of people. I mean, so what's going to happen to all these other people, Guy? I suspect that humans are a lot like every other organism on the planet in that when they go into overshoot, there is a correction or a crash. For most species, there's a crash. I don't, with the exception of our sentience and, and our ability to be clever, I don't see a big difference between us and bacteria in petri dish. When we run out of substrate, we're going to be in real trouble. Uh, which brings us to our, your blog, Nature Bats Last. Uh, let's talk about industrial civilization and climate change. How much can be wiped out because of a changing climate? I suspect all of industrial civilization and all human life on Earth can be removed as a result of climate change. You know, if, if we go to three and a half C above baseline rapidly um, within the very short period of time predicted by the International Energy Agency, much less going to 5C or, or, or 20C, there's no way humans survive that. The lack of political will I get, but why is the academic and scientific community not treating this with the same sense of urgency that you are? The vast majority of academics never question civilization, much less industrial civilization. They never point out the cost and consequences of the way we live. They don't encourage students to think. Indeed, if my case serves as an example, academics are marginalized and then punished for merely questioning the dominant culture. I, I don't see that scientists, and especially academic scientists, are, are in a position that enables them to question the way we live in any significant way. I just don't see that happening. I haven't seen that through my entire career. Nature Bats Last, it addresses such a wide variety of themes, all of which are interconnected, of course. Elaborate on how America as an empire plays into the global self-destruction that we're seeing unfold. The monetary cost of the U.S. military exceeds that of the next 15 nations combined. And the U.S. military uses more oil than any other entity on the planet. So. That, that's just the, the head at this point of, of a beast. Since Jimmy Carter proclaimed the doctrine that bears his name in early 1980, the United States has claimed ownership of all the world's resources. Securing them has proven quite expensive in terms of fiat currency, the living planet, and human lives. But there's no undoing the horrors of empire, and we keep doubling down. As nearly as I can distinguish, the, the typical American loves American empire because it gets us those toys and it gets us those computer screens and it gets us the ability to play on Facebook and do all the things that we've come to take for granted, even though they haven't been around for very long. What's not to like? Uh, let's talk about solutions here um, because I'm getting a little bit depressed. <laughs> you see an impending collapse. I mean, do you think that a collapse is necessary before a new model can be enacted that works harmoniously with nature? Or I, do you think that we can change from the infinite I, growth paradigm to conscious capitalism before this mass die off? I used to think so. And in fact, Tim Garrett at the University of Utah wrote an excellent paper published in Climatic Change in 2009. And he pointed out that only complete collapse prevents runaway greenhouse. Well, that was 2009. Since then, we've triggered 28 self-reinforcing feedback loops on the climate front. Uh, 
I, I think it's too late. Civilization requires tremendous violence. Most of the citizenry is, is willing to have the militaries of the world carry out the violence. We prefer to look the other way, remaining willfully ignorant of the horrors conducted in our names. So I don't see us turning this ship around. I used to think we would. Um, we've triggered too many self-reinforcing feedback loops on the climate change front, nearly all of which are irreversible at temporal spans relevant to the human experience. So I think we're done. Quite a long time ago, Aldous Huxley pointed out, quote, it's rather embarrassing to have given one's entire life to pondering the human predicament and to find out in the end one has little more to say than try to be a little kinder. <laughs> Guy, I know but exactly I, how it feels. Guy, but I know that we wouldn't be doing what we're doing. You wouldn't be running your blog. I wouldn't be doing this show. If we didn't have faith that we could at least change things, I mean, is there anything that you can give to the audience, any tools at all that we can enact right now to prevent this cataclysmic trend? Well, as, as the literature points out, only collapse of industrial civilization prevents one or runaway, runaway greenhouse. Uh, I think that's the best hope for other species. I think that we've already fired the gun, the, the Gatling gun in our case, that leads to human extinction in the relatively near term. I don't think that means we should give up on other species, however, and habitat for those other species. I, I think we have a moral imperative to ensure habitat for as many species as we possibly can, instead of driving some 200 species a day to extinction. I know that's not what most people want to hear. They want to hear that we can maintain this way of life forever, or at least maintain habitat for humans for, for an extended period of time. But as a conservation biologist, I recognized a long time ago that humans, like other organisms, will go extinct. At the time, I just didn't realize that it would be occurring so rapidly and that I would live to see much of the die-off myself. Well, thank you for the enlightening, albeit depressing, <laughs> insight. Thank you so much. everyone.